Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Laura Miller and I make videos about programming. In today's video, we'll discuss the basic rules of operators in JavaScript. I know there are many operators and maybe you're thinking we're going to discuss all of them today, but that's not exactly what we're going to do. We'll cover, for example, logical operators when we talk about booleans and arithmetic operators when we talk about numbers. But behind these operators, there are a few basic rules that we need to understand in order to make sense of them. Otherwise, some of the behavior we'll observe will seem quite weird, quite unexpected. Let's jump to the discussion. So, making sense of operators in JavaScript. Operators can be quite tricky to work with and produce a few unexpected results if you don't understand the rules of operators in JavaScript. And that's exactly what this video is about. We will talk about basic rules of operators, we'll then move on to discussing assignment operators, equality operators, and order operators. Let's just start by creating a new file here. And that is the operators.js file. I'm going to start by showing you a few interesting things about the results that can happen in JavaScript. So remember, we discussed that undefined and null are two different primitives. However, if we compare them using this double equal, save this, let's come to the terminal and run with node. So node operators.js, we got a true. Hmm. Interesting, right? Interesting. So let's try something else. Well, what if we compare, let's say, zero with null? What happens if we compare zero with null? And I save this and, well, I get a false. Okay, that's, that's as expected, right? Zero is different than null. But what if then I compare, let's say, zero with false? What happens if I compare zero with false? And I got a true. And, and then we start wondering, okay, what is actually happening behind the scenes? What if I what if I compare, let's say, zero with an empty string? What is going to happen here? If I save this and then I come back here, well, I also get a true. So you see that the, the behavior is really, um, it's, it, it's interesting, right? It's um, um, It seems to have some unexpected results, but they are not really, really unexpected. They are just because or they are due to the nature of operators in JavaScript. This double equal here, I will write here at the top, so double equal, like so, it is known as a lose equality, right? So lose equality. And what it means, what, what lose equality means is that it's going to coerce some of the operators, going to coerce the operators to their Boolean equivalents before performing the comparison. So if I hover here, you see that there are a few a few um, warnings that say comparison may cause unexpected type coercion. Right, the same here, comparison may cause unexpected type coercion, and it gives a hint to substitute by the equal equal equal. And the idea here is that we have a couple of falsy values or a couple of values that when coerced, they are going to output the same thing or they're going to mean the same thing to JavaScript. And we have a couple of truthy values, right? So falsy values would be the values that are considered false by JavaScript when coerced to Booleans. And truthy values are values that are considered true when converted to Boolean. We'll discuss more about falsy and truthy values when we talk about Booleans in details. For now, it's just important to know that this plays a, a role when defining the result of this lose equality. This is why it's almost always, if not always, recommended to use the strict equality sign, right? So if we change this to strict equality, and I'll save this now, you will see that all the results are going to be false because undefined is really different than null when it comes to the primitive type behind it. Zero is strictly different than null. Zero is strictly different than false. Zero is also strictly different than an empty string. If I want to have the result to be equal to true, then I need to convert or explicitly convert by using the Boolean constructor. If I save this and now I run, you see that the second one is going to be true because I am converting these two values to Boolean and because these two values are falsy, behind the scenes I have something like false equal equal equals false, right? And this is true because the false is equal to false. So this is the first rule that I wanted to discuss. The second rule that I want to discuss with you is that the 
operators in JavaScript, they work most predictably with primitive types. When we leave the realm of primitive types, operators start sometimes to lose their sense. So if I were to write, for example, console.log, and then let's try to add two arrays, right? So one and two plus, let's say, three and four. If you're familiar with Python, you do something like this. You get an array that is going to be four and six, right? So it's going to do an element-wise operation here. If I use the operator plus, then it's going to add each element um, or each, each of the matching elements, and then it's going to result in, in an array like this. So if I save this, what I'm going to get actually is a concatenation, <laughs> right? I'm going to get the string version of these two objects, this object and this object, and it's going to then perform this plus operator in the string version of this object. Now the string version of an array is simply its its um, element. So if I let's let's do it like this console.log and I'm gonna write something here, one and two dot two string, right? And this is going to output the string representation of the array. That's the primitive representation of this object. And this is the one that is going to be used here, right? If I were to, let's say, now play a little bit more with different combinations of operators, let's see what happens when we say one plus two, like so, right? Let's let's see the, the result here. Once we do that, we actually get 12. So this is being coerced into a string. And as a result, it's, con it's concatenating these two strings. Now, if I do a multiplication, for example, the result is different. The result is two because this is going to be coerced to a number and then the multiplication is going to be applied to both operators uh, or operands, right? So the operators in JavaScript, they have um, quite an interesting behavior when we start to play around with different types. And in some cases, it, it may be the case that the result makes no sense to us or the result seems unpredictable. As it turns out, a lot of these cases can be explained by type coercion behind the scenes. And of course, I'm not going to list all of them here, but it's important that you have it in mind because when you start working with such operators and when you start making comparisons, we you really need to keep in mind that different types may lead to a, a different result if you are coercing the types or not, depending on whether you are coercing the types or not. Let's let's try something else. So let's say uh, const x is equal to one to three, right? And that's a number. And I say, if x is equal to the string one to three, then I want to add something to the end of this string. So let's let's do it like this. Const x one to three, uh, one to three, let new x, is equal to an empty string or nothing actually. And then if x is equal to one, two, three, new x is going to be equal to x.concat. And we're going to say four, five, six, right? So here, if x is equal to the string, then I want to concatenate another string at the end of it. And then I want to assign this to the value or to the variable new x. Now, as you may imagine, this is going to break, of course, because one, two, three is a number and the number does not have the method concat, right? So let's save this, let's come back to the terminal and let's run this and boom, yeah? It breaks because x.concat is not a function. It Because x is a number, we cannot concatenate a string to the end of that number. However, if we were to do something like this, x plus four, five, six, then, yeah, okay, sorry, I forgot to consult this, console.log new x, then it's fine. Okay, the, then it's fine, right? Then the one, two, three is coerced into the string type and then we concatenate four, five, six. So it's a very shady world and I have hopefully at least this initial discussion gave you an idea of how shady it can get. It can get even shadier, right? I'm not going to enter too much into detail here, but it's important for you to know the rules that are governing these operators in JavaScript behind the scenes. Let's then move to, I think we'll talk about uh, assignment operators. So I'm going to save this. Well, maybe I can leave this here. Let's create a new, new, new file here, assignments.
right? Assignment.js. Now we already talked a lot about assignment. Assignment is really just this equal here, right? X is equal to 10. Yeah, that's an assignment. Okay, very cool. Thank you. Let's move to the next topic. No, right? Just uh, uh, bear with me a little bit. I want to show you something we did not discuss yet. And these are the compound assignment operators. Compound assignment operators. And these are quite handy if you want to write a little bit shorter, a little bit more compact code. If you think you should do it, yeah, by all means. So I just want to show you, let's declare a couple of variables here. Let's y, uh, let y equals to zero, for example, let z equal to 10, right? And the compound assignment operators are operators that they have something here and then they have an equal sign and then they have something here, right? So we say y something equal something. And here is a couple of examples of these compound operators y plus equal 10 y minus equal 5 z plus or z times equal y and z divided equal by let's say 2 no just running out of creativity here now what this is going to do is this is equivalent to writing y is equal to y plus 10, right? This is equivalent to writing y is equal to y minus 5. This is equivalent to writing that z is equal to z times y. And this is equivalent to writing that z is equal to z divided by 2, right? So after each of them, let's console.log the results here. Console.log y. Once again, console.log y, console.log z, and console.log z, right? So now we can actually compare the expectation. So let's see, y is 0. We're going to add 10 to y, so the result here should be 10. Then we're going to subtract 5, the result should be 5. Then we're going to take z, and we're going to multiply z by 5, so the result here should be 50. And then we're going to take 50, and we're going to divide by 2, and this is going to be 25, right? Let's see if that's correct. Let me clear the whole thing here and run node assignment.js and we have 10, 5, 50 and 25. Next comes equality and we actually already talked quite a bit about equality. So just a recap, we have the loose equality, so the equal equal, right? And we have the strict equality equal equal equals. So my suggestion, always use strict equality only if it's something that you have very little control over, if it's an object that you you cannot really... Yeah, I, I, I personally, I cannot think about any example where the loose equality would be preferred to the strict equality. You can always explicitly convert between two types by using their, their primitives. So you can always call Boolean, for example, to convert, to, to convert the, the value five to its Boolean representation. So there is no reason not to use the strict equality. I think this leads or this prevents a lot of bugs from happening in the code. And my recommendation is to use this as much as possible instead of the loose equality. Last but not least, order operators. So new file order.js and order operators are really less than. So let me just write it down a little bit in the comments. Less than, less than or equal, greater than greater than or equal. They really work yeah, quite as expected. Let's see, 5 less than 10. That should be true, right? 5 less than or equal to 10. That should also be true. 10 is less than 10. This should be false. 10 is less than or equal to 10. That should be true. So I think here there should be no surprises. Let's run the code just to make sure that we have this working correctly. So node order.js and we have true, true, false, true, which is exactly what we expected. Now, uh, gotcha here is that with strings, it's not as straightforward, right? So if I have, let's say something like this, accent less than dictionary, and we want to check if this makes sense, right? Maybe you could think about alphabetical ordering here. You, we would expect a true and that's fine. So if I save this and I run, we'll get a true here. 
but if we add a, an accent here to this accent, so let's say a forward, uh, I don't know how to call this in English, uh, but if we write something like this, accent less than dictionary, then, well, as you may guess, this is going to be false, right? So there are some, some yeah, more, more complex behavior behind the scenes and how this actually works is out of the scope of the video. But I just wanted to bring to your attention that um, alphabetical comparison of strings can be tricky because it's not always that you can infer that um, or that you can guarantee that the string has no no special characters, right? So, for example, my surname here, that would that would be already a problem, right? Let's try to compare it without, and then let's say uh, let's try to compare it with n n n n n, right? And this should be true here, at least for the first one. Um, exactly, that's true. But the moment, I don't know, I didn't try this. Let's see what's the result of the second one. And the result is still true. So as you can see, the, the my surname with, with the umlaut, so with this um, special character here, it results to true when comparing, but the one of accent does not, right? So. Um, it's quite a bit of unpredictability here. I would avoid using this for alphabetical comparisons. There are other methods. We talk about them probably, I think, maybe when we talk about strings. Yeah, okay, I forgot to mark this as we moved forward. Let's mark all of them as completed because we have discussed at least the basics. So the foundation of operators in JavaScript. We'll talk about specific logical operators when we talk about booleans and arithmetic operators when we talk about numbers. That's it for operators or at least for a background on operators in JavaScript. And in the next video, we'll start exploring booleans, which also means we'll talk about logical operators. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification when the video is out. See you in the next videos. Bye bye.